What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. Video is a little bit more overdue than I would have thought, but just haven't had the time to sit down and record it. And I finally find time on my birthday of all days to sit down and record it. But uh, it's all right. I like sitting down and recording videos for you guys. But it is my birthday. So for those of you that watch the intro, if you want to wish, uh, give me birthday wishes, go for it. But if you don't, that's fine as well. Uh, but what we're really here to talk about today is not me. It's my pre-bowl top 25 and the ranking reaction comparison. Of course, we all know who uh, the top four is. We all know what has happened with New Year's Six Bowl games. But where do I personally rank teams and where does the committee rank teams? You're going to find that out here in a little bit. But hey, before we get that started, hey, it's my birthday, right? It, it, you can make my birthday just that more special by leaving a like on the video, subscribing, sharing, leaving a comment down below, uh, giving me your opinion, or just wishing me happy birthday. Hey, make my day better. Uh, but if not, then hey, that's okay too. Um, those videos are a little late. Let's go ahead and dive right on into it. There was one team that dropped out of my rankings last week, and it was San Diego State. Um, now, I, I could absolutely see a case where San Diego State is still ranked. Sure, it's just not my personal opinion right now because they just they did not play well at all in that game against U Utah State in the Mountain West Championship game. They just got run over again. What did I say? San Diego State does not like to play from behind. That showed in that game. They drop out of the rankings. Um, and my first five out includes San Diego State, but it's Utah State, uh, San Diego State, Wisconsin, Purdue, and Minnesota. So two Mountain West teams and uh, three Big Ten teams waiting to get in. They might be able to uh, at the end of bowl season, but again, you'll get my final top 25 and everything later. So uh, as usual, we're going to look at my rankings first on this side and then look at the playoff rankings on this side. So here we go. Dive right in. Uh, 25, I have UTSA back ranked. Um, they were up against Western Kentucky big, almost let it slip uh, away from them, but it was too little too too late for Western Kentucky. They're able to close out and get their first conference championship in only 10 years of existence. This is a great season for UTSA, and I think they should finish uh, the regular season plus the championship game ranked. This team has done some remarkable things this year. They're at 25. Up one spot uh, because San Diego State dropped out uh, was Kentucky at number 24. Didn't play in the championship game, but Still a really good team, a really good uh, regular season for Kentucky. Uh, for me, they finish at 24th. But just ahead of them, another SEC team. That's Texas A&M. So, uh, and also I'll do this too. Arkansas is here at 22. Um, so when you look at these three SEC teams right here, the way I rank these teams was as follows. I know Kentucky is nine and three, and they have the, the they have the better record, sure. But A&M has beat Alabama. Probably the consensus number one, although you can make a case for Michigan as well. Again, we will get there. Um, but Texas A&M, they've beaten at Alabama, and you can't put Arkansas below A&M because Arkansas beat A&M, and they have the exact same record. Uh, for Kentucky, the resume is lacking a little bit because, again, they didn't have to play Bama. Uh Ole Miss, teams like that. Uh, A&M and Arkansas did. Uh, they also had to play Bama, uh, of course, but while Kentucky did have to play Georgia, they didn't fare super well in that game. So while they have the better record, I put them below those two teams because I think those two teams ahead of them, being Arkansas, Texas A&M, have played a tougher schedule. Um, they're, they're played a tough, uh, a tougher schedule through the regular season. So uh, that's where they finished the regular season for me. And 21 is Clemson. But a lot of people are going to look and say this is a disappointing season for Clemson. And let's be real. It is when I do my top 10 disappointing and uh, most uh, surprising teams. Um, you probably will see Clemson on that uh, disappointing list just by expectations coming in. But this team really turned it around as of late. They got their offense together. For me, they finish out the season 21st. Now looking at the committee side of things, they put AM at 25. San Diego State at 24, dropping five spots, but not out of the rankings. To me, I'm like, eh, like, yeah, so I don't get why the committee has San Diego State in there. Like, I get it. It's been a really good season, but the offense is just not there. And we saw that against Utah State, and Utah State just blew them out of the water. If anything, I think Utah State should be ranked if they want to have uh, San Diego State ranked too. I don't get it, but that's just my personal Opinion, Louisiana is at 23. Notice you have not seen Louisiana yet. They are uh, ranked 23rd. 
again, with, with the love that, that, that the committee has been give, giving to these group of five conferences this year, that being not a lot besides Cincinnati, it's understandable that they have them at 23. 22 is Kentucky and 21 is Arkansas. No huge arguments here, although San Diego State, it's fine if you have them ranked, but me personally, I just don't see why they should be um, considering their, I mean, they have a win over Utah. So, so that's a thing that's probably going to keep them ranked uh, as well. Uh, didn't think about that until now. Um, so uh, I retract what I said, San Diego state being ranked. It's fine. It's acceptable. They've had a really good season. And again, they beat Utah team who are pac 12 champs. So, um, uh, but moving on from uh, 25 through 21 into the top 20. Now uh, for me, NC state did not move They're at number 20. I didn't feel like I could move them because a, they didn't play and no one uh, really did anything justifiable to make them move. So uh, they're going to stay there at 20th. Uh, Houston does drop two spots to number 19. Um, Houston played a good game against Cincinnati, probably as good of a game as they could. Uh, and they did, they, they made that game uh, pretty close, but just, uh, Cincinnati ended up taking over and there was really nothing Houston could do uh, about it once Cincinnati got in front at that point. So uh, for Houston, this is a really good season for them. I'm going to put them at 19th to finish out the season. Um, I thought this was a really good year for Houston. They're going to a pretty solid bowl game as well. Um, interesting to see that matchup as well. I'll do my gigantic bowl game preview uh, probably sometime next week. So uh, Louisiana is here at 18th. They jump up six spots from my last poll. And again, it's hard enough to beat a team once. It's really hard to beat a team twice. You'll see that evident later. Uh, but Louisiana here at 18th. When you look at the AP poll, USA Today poll, I personally think they have them a little bit too high. I think 18th through 21st, somewhere around there is where Louisiana should finish. But another reason that they're at 18th and Houston's at 19th, I bumped them above Houston because they are 12 and one conference champs while Houston made the conference championship, but they are 11 and two. They did not win. That's why Louisiana is over Houston. Wake Forest is up here at 17. This was a really, really good season for Wake Forest. Um, no one saw this coming and uh, they actually did play Pitt pretty close. They're only down by three at half and then just, um, well, the, the, the last, uh, uh, 47 minutes or so for uh, Wake Forest were just not 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 good. The, they were just not good at all. Um, the, the, they couldn't get their offense going. Pitt started to like figure them out, um, and then Pitt really kind of just took control of that game. So for Wake Forest, hey, this is a good season. They do move up overall one spot, but that's also due to the fall of Houston. I didn't feel like I could punish them too much, and I definitely can't drop them below Louisiana uh, as of this point. I was at 16. I thought Iowa would get embarrassed by Michigan. I didn't think they would get sit down and be taught a lesson on how to play football against Michigan. That was an embarrassment. I'll go ahead and say it for the Iowa fans that have been thinking it for the past four days, five days. That game was an embarrassment, but it also shows just how much Iowa relies on their defense. And when their defense can't get much going, it's really hard for them to win football games. So uh, definitely a top 25 team in my mind. They made it to the Big Ten title game, uh, and they're going to sit right here at 16th. Moving on to what the committee did, Houston in 20th. Good job, committee. Finally starting to give Houston a little bit more uh, respect. They do jump up uh, one spot. Um from 21st last week, but Houston is a good team. Uh, and again, they're going to a solid bowl game. Clayton Toon has played really uh, well this year. Uh, Nathaniel Dell is a really underrated uh, wide receiver. Houston's got a lot of nice pieces on the defensive end too. Um, I like where the committee has them at 20th. Above them is Clemson at 19th. And above them is a team that beat Clemson, NC State at 18th, but also above them, a team that beat NC State and Clemson Wake Forest, or no, sorry, they did not beat Clemson. Wake Forest lost to Clemson, but again, made the ACC title game, so I don't have really much uh, argument there. But NC State beat Clemson. Uh, Wake Forest beat NC State, but Wake Forest did not beat Clemson. So head-to-heads there, again, kind of a wash, um, but Wake Forest made the title game. Fine with that. They didn't move NC State. That's good. Again, Clemson, Houston rose up because San Diego State dropped. Um and again, like I talked, we've already talked about Clemson, already, already talked about NC State a little bit. This was a good regular season for NC State, and what a way to finish out with that comeback win against North Carolina. 
No one, not including myself, was giving them any hope in the final two minutes that they had left. But again, big players stepped up in big moments, and NC State got the job done. Just talked about Wake Forest. Me and the committee agree on where they should be ranked. And moving on to 16th for the committee is Oklahoma. So again, a disappointing season for Oklahoma this year in that people thought this was going to be – well, they didn't even make the Big 12 title game, but this was supposed to be Oklahoma's year. Like, I was – talking about them in the preseason like th this team had nothing wrong with them well clearly once we got in the season there were things wrong with Oklahoma they're going to get to go to a pretty interesting bowl game against Oregon coming up you'll see where they're ranked by the committee and me in a little bit um, and speaking of which let's actually jump ahead into the top 15 where I have Oregon at number 15 Oregon just cannot handle physicality um, Stanford that was just a bad loss but when you look at the two Utah games that they've played just the physicality of Utah was enough to knock this team off course and um, they were able to get the better of them both times. Um, you see Utah there for the committee at 11th, but Oregon does drop five spots for me. They have one of the best wins of the season uh, on the road in Columbus against Ohio state. Um, but for uh, the, the, the Oregon ducks, um, getting embarrassed on the biggest stage that they played in this season, probably besides the horseshoe in Columbus, although the Pac-12 champ, uh, Pac-12 championship, those are huge stakes. Um, and, and they were playing for a college football playoff spot until Utah came along. And the physicality of Utah um, was able to uh, uh, knock Oregon off course and um, just derail their playoff hopes. So uh, Oklahoma, I've already talked about disappointing season for them. I couldn't move them though. They're going to stay at 14th. Um, again, you can make the case for Oregon to be above Oklahoma. Uh, they're going to play each other in, uh, I believe it's the Alamo Bowl. So uh, again, I'll preview predict that matchup once it comes up, um, once that video gets out. BYU dropped one spot for me at 13th. Um, so close to a New Year's Six Bowl, but I mean, what a job uh, Kalani Sataki has done. I knew BYU would make a bowl game this year, but I also didn't think they would be as good as they are with just Tyler Algier coming back. And that's pretty much it, right? They were one of the worst teams in returning production. And to be able to do what they did this year with that amount of returning production, absolutely incredible. Uh, with the Oregon job being open now, Kalani Sataki definitely going to be talked about to go to Oregon, along with guys like Chip Kelly, uh, other guys. The coaching carousel has been crazy. I will do a video on that as well. But um, BYU at 13th, the ACC champs, uh, the Pittsburgh Panthers are going to be here at 12th. Uh, they jump up four spots for me, and they're going to face the team at 11th in a bowl game. It's Michigan State and Pitt. I think that's going to be an interesting game, but talking about why I have Michigan State ahead of Pitt, Michigan State has the win over Michigan. Michigan, are, Michigan is in the college football playoffs. Uh, Pitt, while they've won the ACC, they played that extra game. Um, they've looked pretty good all throughout this year. Western Michigan uh, is going to be the loss that haunts them, much like Bowling Green with Minnesota. Uh, but overall, a very, very good season for Pitt. A lot of playmakers on that team. That game right there between my personal 11 and 12 should be a lot of fun to watch. Moving over to the committee side of things, uh, we got Iowa here at number 15. Or at number 15. Um, and, and again, much the same argument they get blown out by Michigan they were 13th uh last week still a top 25 team but just a disappointing showing for Iowa in that game Oregon's here at 14 who do they hire as head coach that'll be something interesting to watch the committee and I agree on BYU again Kalani Sataki might be someone that gets talked about at Oregon if not again like I said Chip Kelly can uh go back there are names like Joe Brady out there got guys all around um, that can really fill that spot with Mario Cristobal going off to Miami. Again, I will do a video on coaching changes, but I know as soon as I make a video, then there's going to be a new huge coaching change that I'm going to have to make. Not, I'm just going to wait until after the national championship game or once things seem to start to slow down. But right now, we're in high gear for um, um, coaching changes and transfers, people entering the transfer portal as well. Uh, Pitt at number 12. Again, I haven't ranked the same. No huge argument there. Utah at number 11. Again, I felt like the committee didn't give Utah enough respect last week. Uh, they were all the way down at 17th. And now this week, I feel like this Utah team is a top 10 team, which you're going to see you're in a little bit, but they do jump up six spots. Um, just uh, Michigan State, I believe, headed them at 10th, but we'll see here in a little bit. So no big argument for me, but at the same time, it's like, 
Utah beat Oregon twice and they beat them soundly, a team that went into Columbus and beat the Buckeyes. So just, just a lot of things uh, going through the committee, but uh, overall, not too shabby. And speaking of Utah in the top 10, there they are at number 10 for me again, beating Oregon twice and not just beating them, handling them, absolutely blowing them out. Uh, some big wins for the Utah Utes this year. Yes, they have some shaky losses, um, although the losses look pretty good now. BYU, uh, San Diego State, uh, uh, the one loss in a Pac-12 play as well. Um, but hey, BYU could have been a conference champ if they were in a conference, but of course, an independent team. Um, and then as goes for uh, San Diego State, they were in their conference championship game, and they were one of the better defenses in the nation this year as well. So um for, for Utah, this was overall a pretty good season. It probably could have been better if they could have pulled out the BYU-San Diego State losses. We might actually be talking about this team in the College of All Playoff instead of Cincinnati. But again, what happened, happened. Um, but still for Utah, going to their first ever Rose Bowl, so not too shabby. Oklahoma State <sighs> lost the Big 12 championship game by this, by this much. And their consolation prize will be the Sugar Bowl. Their defensive coordinator is off to Ohio State at the end uh, of their bowl game. I, I'm not sure if he's going to coach their bowl game, uh, their bowl game, but I do know that uh, he will go into his defensive coordinator position at Ohio State immediately after Ohio State plays in the Rose Bowl against Utah. We'll talk about the Buckeyes in a little bit. Uh, but for Oklahoma State, this is a really good season, um, better than I expected them to have. And while Spencer Sanders did not have a great year, again, that defensive coordinator, uh, Jim uh, Broyles, really, really good stuff that he did there uh, this year. Uh, and he hopes to do the same with Ohio State next year. And as an Ohio State fan, I kind of hope he does the same too. Uh, Ole Miss uh, and Ohio State, both not moving for me, uh, seven and eight. But Baylor, uh, after winning the Big Ten championship, championship game, again, by this much, they jump up to number six. Baylor has had an incredible season this year. Um, and again, they're going to get to go to the Sugar Bowl to play Ole Miss. So uh, that's going to be uh, really, really exciting stuff. Oklahoma State, I believe, going to the Fiesta Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. I, did I say Sugar Bowl earlier? I'm pretty sure I did. That was my mistake, going to the Fiesta Bowl. I'll talk about who they play uh, later in this video and, again, at a later date. But uh, that is my top ten. Um, now let's move on to the uh, committee here. Number 10 is Michigan State. I just talked about that a little bit ago. I feel like Utah should be that team at number 10. Um, while Michigan State um, probably has two okay, uh, two pretty good losses like Purdue, um, they're pretty solid this year. And of course, Ohio State, the team that I have at number seven. Team the committee has at six. We'll get there. I don't necessarily agree with it, um, but Oklahoma State at number 10, or Michigan State, excuse me, at number 10. They've had a really good season. Oklahoma State is at number nine. No argument again. Um, really good stuff. Um, and actually, Oklahoma State did drop more than that. They also dropped four spots. They did not drop one spot. They dropped four. People are going to comment about that, but people who watch the video know Oklahoma State actually dropped four spots, not one. Uh, that's a typo. And I apologize for that. Uh, Ole Miss, again, did not move. No conference championship, no movement. Uh, didn't play, didn't move kind of how I operate as well for the most part. Uh, now this one, six and seven. I was in Sioux City um, d at a bowling tournament when um, I saw the rankings come out. And big shocker, no surprise, the top four is what it is. But Ohio State and Baylor, I was really uh, – you guys know me. I'm an Ohio State fan till the day I die. My, my, my blood bleeds and runs OSU – positive i am all for the buckeyes but for them to be ahead of baylor at six i don't agree with that because baylor won their conference championship game and while ohio state might have the better losses looking at oregon and michigan uh than to baylor's uh, oklahoma state once who they just avenged that loss to and then i believe tcu is that uh, other loss they're still conference champs and i feel like that deserves some merit to be above Ohio State. But uh, regardless, I have Baylor ahead of Ohio State. My personal rankings, the committee disagrees. I'm sure it was a close debate, but man, I, I really feel like Baylor should be ahead of Ohio State here, much like I feel like Utah should be ahead of Michigan State. Same argument. They're conference champs. They should be ahead. Um, I think Utah's the best three-loss team in the country. But let's move on to the top five 
and um, no surprises across the board. Everything is the same. And what what do you expect? Bama at one, Michigan at two, Georgia at three, Cincinnati four. There's your playoff field with Notre Dame being the first team out at number five. Notre Dame had a really good year. They're going to get to go to the Fiesta Bowl to play Oklahoma State. And um, we'll see how they do without Brian Kelly. Um, But, again, that defensive coordinator, Marcus Freeman, going to take over. And the players absolutely love him to death. So I'm sure Notre Dame is going to come out, uh, play a very interesting game there. But your playoff matchups. Bama, Cincinnati, uh, and Michigan, Georgia should be some pretty fun games to watch. Uh, But again, I'm not going to really talk about the top five much because there really should be um, no surprise here. Um, But uh, what what I will be doing for the next couple of videos is I'm not going to do an Army-Navy preview. Um, It's dead week here uh, at uh, my university, which basically means study for finals week. And then I have finals next week, um, but I only have finals Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Thursday, Friday, I have off. Um, I will be reviewing Army, Navy, um, but I will not be doing a preview prediction because I just don't think if I end up finding time for it, I might. But I just don't think I'm going to find time for it. Uh, So the next video you're going to see for me is Army, Navy uh, reaction um, and review. That'll probably come out either late Saturday or or, early. sometime on Sunday, um, one, whenever I find time to uh, record that. Um, but other videos you're going to see from me, I'm going to do a huge bowl game uh, prediction, um, but I, I'm, I'm going to do a separate video for the New Year's Six Bowl games like I did last year. Um, and then another separate video uh, previewing the college football playoffs. So three videos predicting uh, bowl games. We're going to do every other bowl game. We're going to be doing um, – New Year's Six Bowl games, not the college football playoff, and then the college football playoff. Uh, And then, of course, I will uh, do a huge uh, preview on the national championship game once that matchup gets set. Uh, So I hope all of you guys have a great rest of your day. This is the end of the video. It is my birthday again, so if you want to make my birthday a little bit better, you can like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment. Anything you can uh, help support the channel does mean a lot to me. But the most important thing, remember to play hard, tailgate harder. I'll see all of you guys later. Bye.